very much for more people, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be hearing from more from them a little in a little while. But now we have, um, I think, the king of rap music. We can tell that we're unfortunate. <laughs> Please welcome Mr. Ice T, ladies and gentlemen. Did you play in bands before you made a rap record? No, I mean, before rap music came along, I didn't never thought I would even have a chance to get into music at all, because I'm not a singer. I can't play any instruments. I was just out on the streets doing my thing. And then when rap music came, I was like, wow, you know, maybe I can get into this. And uh, I kind of, you know, just kind of like opened up doors for a lot of people. Yeah, were you like, did you like do poetry before then? Before? Yeah, I used to write poems, but it was like the kind of stuff that, uh, you know, gang members would write on walls and stuff, and the stuff that I would say to my friends just to entertain them. Yeah. Wasn't anything you could consider constructive, you know? Something for the fun of it. Yeah. Now, who is your biggest influence in hip-hop? Who is your biggest influence in hip-hop? Well, I don't know. I mean, there's like really two people that really molded everybody, really, as far as on the hardcore tip, and that would be, number one would be James Brown. But uh, the group that really turned me out, the first concert I ever went to where I was, my mind was blown, so to speak, was Parliament. George Clinton mm. blew my mind. Great. Well, I'm very pleased because <laughs> we've got, as a special treat for you, yeah. a bit of George Clinton from 20 years ago, 1976. Let's yeah. have a look at that. Oh. <laughs> Um, you've also you've written a foreword for a book, or an introduction to a book by Iceberg Slim. Tell us a little about, bit about him. Well, Iceberg Slim was a writer who uh, wrote a lot of um, interesting novels uh, that I read when I was, um, you know, growing up. He was a pimp and a hustler, and uh, I used to read these books and imagine myself living that lifestyle. But then there was one point where I realized he had become a writer, and I said, "Wow, you know, I'm out here living this lifestyle, but..." Maybe there's a way I can document my life like he did. So I used him as a role model, and I tried to use music to document the life I led. Yeah, excellent. And in the back, there's a whole glossary of uh, terms for yeah. initiated. For the squares, yeah, you know exactly. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah so. Now, my, um, you've got hardcore heavy metal group. Is that right? How would you describe that? Body count. We, uh, you know, I grew up, I like, I like metal, you know what I'm saying? I've been, I grew up off of rock. I was unaware that black people weren't supposed to like rock, considering how we invented it, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I got off into it, and I had a group of friends that played instruments. So one day we were making my album, the OG album, and they were sitting around unemployed looking at me, you know, trying to get out. And I was like, look, we got a band right here. Why don't we make a band? So I said, we're going to call it Body Count, and we're going to do the type of metal I like, which is aggressive, something for the mosh pit, stuff like Slayer, it's aggressive stuff. I like Minor Threat, Fugazi, stuff like that. So I'm like, Let's do it, but I'm going to sing about stuff I want to sing about. We're not going to change the context. And we put the album out so far. We sold about four million records worldwide right, with two right. albums, yeah. Now, you've got a TV show as well. Yeah. A music TV show, we could say. Badass TV. Right? Badass TV right over here, you know, in the UK. Do you enjoy doing the television? It's cool, you know. It's fun because I get to laugh and act crazy and be stupid, you know? Because everybody thinks I'm all serious all the time, but I'm really not. I have fun. I eat cereal, play Nintendo, and Well, that's shake. what I was going to say. What do you do? What do you do when you're relaxing? What is your a nice relaxing afternoon for you? What's the best thing you could do if you're just like completely chilling out? What would you do? The best thing I can do. I couldn't stay on television right here, but we get the idea. 
Yeah, if I'm not doing that, I'll usually watch it on TV and rewind it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Good hoping. Now, um, you know, a lot of... Uh, there's a lot of, you had a lot of stress about all the record being banned and that, yeah. you know, but I've always enjoyed the record. If I want, my son wants me to sign this record for him. Is it any risk, do you think? And your kid listening to this? Yeah. Not if you're, you know, a confident parent and you ride around and watching him and making sure that he don't, you know, try to act out some of this. This is a cool record. This is what's considered a positive record. Mm. You better listen to some of my music because some of it's off the hook. Mm on the real, you know. Yeah, yeah. But there's a lot of dangerous stuff in the house, you know what I'm saying? You gotta watch your kids, you know, there's a, there's a little thing here that says parental guidance, advice, you know. And in my book, parental guidance is okay. always advised. I'm just holding this up, you give me some hold it up there. Oh yeah, so yeah, much. Like, I thought that was a label, parental advice, I thought, I wanna get on this label, parental advice, it's so nice, I thought. Now, yeah. you're, 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 you've got, you're gonna do the track, I Must Stand. Yeah. Is that an autobiographical song, is it about you? Uh, I wrote this song after I came from the um, Million Man March. You know, we had the Million Man March. In Washington. We, yeah, two million black men showed up out there. You know, the press said 300,000 was two million. I was there. And um, it was a point where we all held hands, and I was like saying to myself, wow, you know, how did I end up here? I was out in the street pulling guns on people, doing everything you could do wrong, and now here I am trying to get my life together. So when I went home, I said, I got to write a record about this. And the only way I could do it was try to document my life and not preach to anybody, but say, hey, look, I changed a, a little bit. Maybe you can, too. So that's where the song came from. Well, we'll look forward to hearing that in a little bit. And meanwhile, thank you very much indeed. I see you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> so, we'll be hearing that song in just a moment. But in the meantime, let's go all the way over to here. Uh, thank you, Barry. So now, ladies and gentlemen, let's move on with one of, uh, he's got a brand new LP called The Return of the Real. Uh, the track is I Must Stand. Um, parental uh, control is advised, so I'm going to go and stand with my mum and dad. Please welcome Ice-T, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> said life was gonna be easy. But damn. Kid moms died when I was seven, pops died 11. What's up with heaven is hell when well, you're an orphan at an early age. It's an impressionable stage, no love breeds rage. In the heart of a child who never knew his roots, looked up the pimps and the hustlers in the eel skin boots. Parking caddies on the sidewalk, gangster talk, trucking diamonds and gold, rubber bands around the bank rolls. Fly girls that make your head spin, seem they partied all day long. I was like, put me on. But they said, little fella, run and go play. Take your butt to school or else you have to be like us one day. I didn't understand, but I tried to get a job. Well, all the players got the girls because they hustle and rob. I was like making about 150 a week. And after taxes, you know what that is, lunch me. Trouble and crime, I had it hard, had to sleep in my car sometimes. But I never let another player see me down. I kept my front up, my gear clean, even when checking minor green. Brothers knew my game was true, so I hooked up with the real crew that knew exactly what to do. Bank jobs and jewels, quick to flex with tools. Pimping holes on the block, checking cash, nine, stop, crack spots. Armored with interior bars, no lie, I used to own about 15 cars. 
every team's feel a made. Straight my women and sway. Pave, PJ, see the talents holiday. It was on, crazy out of control. We made up the word fall, and that was how we rolled. But the FBI had a whole nother idea. It's called multiple indictments for hundreds of years. Just no retirement, you die young. Listen to a fake, he might tell you to grab a gun. I get phone calls from Ken Demro. Brothers I ran with, brothers I really know. They tell me I she got much love in the pen. You're the one that got away, don't want to see you in. They tell me, tell the little homies the deal. Don't have them come up in this hellish habitat of shanks and steel. I marched two million strong in D.C. Looking eye to eye with brothers that I used to think below me. Damn, my mind was twisted in my hustling days. But God spared me. I got a baby son to raise. And being black ain't easy. Prejudice is real. But health and liberty is all we need for us to build. We got to come together unseparated. Check yourself like I did, black man, because we're all related. A common disaster from their LP, lay it down. The Cowboy Junkies, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>